What is up my Lurkana goons? My name is Kevin and welcome to the Lurkana goons channel and let's go over some Lurkana stuff today. So unless you were sleeping under a rock you know that Lurkana released more cards uh, over the last couple days. We got like five reveals in, in French um, and then German uh, a couple couple days ago and just yesterday we got two more reveals um, and then including the Madame Mim Dragon that I didn't talk about last time. So these were posted on Discord, Twitter and let's go over them real quick. Okay so two out of three cards that we're going to talk about were actually legendary reveals. So now we actually have legendaries for Amethyst and legendaries for Ruby that uh, we can talk about um, one in particular. But the first one is going to be the Madam Mim Purple Dragon. It's a seven ink inkable card. It has five strength, seven willpower, four lore, um, and evasive. And it has an ability that says, I win, I win. When you play this character, banish her or return another two chosen characters of yours to your hand. Flavor text is, did I say no purple dragons? Did I? Uh, if you don't know the context to that, I believe her and Merlin have a deal uh, in their battle about no dragons. Anyways, point is, is this card good? I think this card is kind of nice. So from a casual perspective of wanting to play the Merlin and Madame Mim deck, um, this seems like your first uh, boss monster. Uh, Merlin seems like, like a secondary boss monster, like a win condition where you can... Um, stack up the lore um, with Merlin and Arthur but um, if you want to kind of secure the game at the end it seems like Madame Mim might be one of the options available to you um, now do we think it's going to see competitive play that I'm not entirely sure um, it is a dragon uh, so it does lose out to some of the newer cards like that crossbow um, it also loses out to I believe um the ruby sword that's in the game um and again be, being uh, the fact that it is a four lore evasive usually um when people drop cards like this they're met with dragon fire let it go um they're hit with a combo piece right um it's a little harder to out this if you're in like a steel matchup um you know but if you're playing a ruby deck and you have dragon fire be prepared this is like perfect bait right um but uh, is this going to be a card that doesn't see meta play? No, I think this card is actually kind of good. This card has mixed feelings from what I've seen in the community about competitiveness. Um, we don't know the rest of Chapter 2, so we just can't say, to be honest. But uh, I think the card seems like a decent uh, win condition uh, for a deck. It's a good boss monster for a deck, mainly because um, the synergy you're going to get off of Madame Mim when you do pull it off to bounce the two cards to your hand is probably going to be very crucial, right? Um, it is a bad top deck if you have nothing to play and your board is empty and you want to play Madame Mim and you can't uh, because the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to play her and it's just going to get banished, right? And, uh, I, f I feel like on a tempo turn, if you can drop this uh, on, on a turn where you have a lot of tempo, um, yeah, you're going to be able to close that game out. Um, is it win more? I don't think so. I think that this is a card that can be pulled off um, to secure your win condition. I think this card might be the win condition to kind of um, um, mix and match the, the themes with the decks um, and, and really take advantage of the fact that you can bounce cards to your hand. Um, it does kind of feel like like a, like an old school Yu-Gi-Oh tribute summon. You know, you got to get rid of two characters just to play one character. So obviously your deck isn't going to be full with only Merlin. Sometimes you're probably going to have to return some of your own characters to your hand that don't have any abilities. Yeah, you can use them for ink, but you do lose out on those um, on those characters. Um, you can quest with them before though, so that's kind of cool, right? So we don't know how the synergy is going to work on a competitive level. On a casual level though, I really want to play this deck <laughs> you know this looks so fun uh this looks really fun to be able to to capitalize on bouncing back my rabbit bouncing back my merlin crab um you know you kind of have to lose uh some advantage when you play the other madam mim cards but if you can bounce them back and use them for ink that's always going to be good so um i think like it seems like a decent boss monster let me know what you guys think of that one and the next one we have, these were actually revealed in French, these next two. It's another legendary. We have Scar, the Vicious Cheater. It's a 7 ink, uninkable, 6 strength, 5 willpower, 2 lore. As Rush, um, and it has an ability It says, If you challenge and banish a character with this character, you may ready it. It may not quest for the rest of the turn. At first I read this and I thought, oh, you can attack two characters, right? Um, but it's really just based off of how much willpower it has. So um, if you hit a character with only one strength, then you can ready it hit another character with only one strength and you can ready it again and if there's only one strength characters on the field like you're playing against a rockstar stitch then you're going to be able to take advantage of that um now is this card gonna be like meta competitive Ooh, i don't know so there's a lot of talk already whether or not this is gonna replace certain cards like maleficent dragon or elsa in the ruby amethyst right um but realistically this seems more like a card that you would have to use and replace of be prepared um it is a seven ink uninkable the same way be prepared is um 
And the main difference is that if you're able to pull off Scar and clear their board as opposed to just dropping a Be Prepared, um, you keep your characters on board. So same thing, kind of if you're in a tempo, uh, if you're in a tempo beat and you're and you're, and you're like able to um, keep to keep control of that tempo and by dropping Scar on turn seven and outing their board, uh, you'll keep your characters as opposed to needing to rely on turn seven Be Prepared to not only clear their board but sometimes your board as well. Which Ruby Amethyst has no problem with that with you know <laughs> clearing your own board. Um, but this does expand on, on the ability to play other Ruby decks, you know, so you won't have to, you won't always have to play a control style Ruby deck because you'll have cards like Scar in your deck instead of cards like Be Prepared, for example. You could even play two and two. I think it's kind of fitting that, you know, they gave Scar this, uh, the exact same, um, the ink cost as Be Prepared. They made it uninkable, which I think makes it very balanced. Um, I think if they made it an inkable card, it would be a little too good. Um, I do think that that's what makes it different than cards like Maui. Uh, Maui is an extremely strong card right now with Rush, so I don't see why um, you wouldn't really play like this over Maui, for example, but they have different use cases. Another cool combo I've been seeing is a lot of players talk about how they, you can use Rapunzel to heal back your Scar. Um, after, you've, after you've challenged multiple characters, you heal it back for three health, you draw a card, and then you're able to challenge more characters. <laughs> um, because, you know, as you know in Larkana, you don't have to do things in any particular sequence. You can combo off the way you want to combo it off. Um, yeah, it sounds like 11 ink, but there's a lot of popular Ruby Amber deck right now that play four lantern and those decks are pretty good so if you have three to four lantern on board and you're dropping this card you're paying way less for that combo and you know like we just talked about that's a combo that clears your opponent's board and not your board it seems really good against a deck that like the rockstar stitch combo deck um or if they have a bunch of little characters that are going to be um exerted you can clear their board like nothing but it also doesn't seem like the best card against um certain decks that don't necessarily need to keep their characters quested that often you know what i mean um so it can bring you a tempo swing but is it gonna be a card that replaces your current uh ruby cards in your chapter one deck probably not um i do think this is gonna see some type of competitive play because the more i read this card the more i just think like there's this is gonna be very strong there's gonna be combos that we're not thinking about right now and in chapter two there's gonna be more cards that make this card stronger right so that's how i feel about it and then just on a complete casual level love the card art i followed the artist on twitter after i saw they retweeted it pretty dope um, i like that it quests for two lore that's another big difference is that people forgetting that it quests for two lore so you can quest um if it survives the turn you can quest with it um and then uh, ready it back with your sword and then go start swinging again or something right um so uh, it's probably going to be a cool legendary foil to pull. I like it, but is it going to be something that's going to be like game changing? Uh, I don't know. Yet. You guys let me know. It um, doesn't seem like it's going to impact the current best Ruby deck, which is Ruby Amethyst, but hopefully there's going to be better or different types of Ruby decks when chapter two comes out, right? And then our last card, also revealed in French, uh, we got a Li Shang. This is a steel card. It's a five ink inkable. It's going to be a archery instructor. Uh, three strength, six willpower, two lore, and he has an ability that says shooting lesson. When this character quests, your characters gain evasive for the rest of the turn. They can challenge other characters with evasive. Now, it's important to note that it's not your other characters. He also gains evasive for the rest of the turn. So um, we were just talking about how if you have Sword of Virtue or let's say LeFou or Fan the Flames, if you quest with your Li Shang and you use one of those cards on your Li Shang, your Li Shang now has evasive. So now he as well can challenge evasive characters, right? This is a uh, generic card that Steel needed, a way to out evasive. Steel doesn't have a way to out evasives aside of using smash, grab your swords or cannons. Um, but now you can drop Li Shang on turn five and it adds a lot of pressure because um, Li Shang has, a, has the capability of giving your other characters evasive. So now if you have been curving well, you can kind of challenge their evasive characters um, on your turn, right? I also do want to take a little note to go over the flavor text because um, I did translate it myself. It says, learn what to do, then learn to do it without thinking. That's some really good advice. I love that, Li Shang. Um, is the card going to be um, competitive? I think it, it does have uh, a possibility of seeing some type of competitive play. It just depends on how the game um, plays out. Right now, we're like in a very slow uh, paced Lorcana style uh, play style. Um, so I think if you were to use Li Shang in like today's meta, it would be good. Uh, dropping it on turn five with two lore is always nice. The stats of having a three strength and six willpower are pretty nice. And then that extra little ability um, to help you out evasive characters is pretty cool. Um, 
you know, I just you kind of have to have a way. You kind of have to have some other characters um, on the board already. You have to have some good tempo for, in order to like capitalize on this. But you know, it really depends if we're gonna see a lot more evasives in chapter two. Are we gonna be in an evasive meta in chapter two? Maybe not. Um, I'm not thinking it's gonna be that simple. Chapter two. I'm thinking we're all we're gonna start cooking and getting some getting some uh, some theories going on. You know, I just can't wait till they reveal more cards, and that's what I'm waiting for. So if you guys are waiting for that too, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, remember to follow us on all of our social media platforms if you want to see these cards and the translations they're up on the Lorcana goons facebook instagram etc etc um and yeah thank you guys for watching i hope you learned something and we'll see you goons next time